Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm an associate teaching professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. I hope you're having a great day. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Chicago. It's late winter, early spring. I hope the weather's great where you're at. Okay, today we're gonna look at AI in architecture school. What will AI's role be in architecture school? I'm hoping you can help me out through this discussion that we're going to have. All right, before we move on, I'd like to thank the members of the task force, Daniel Caven, Dylan Pranger, and Reed Kroloff. Thank you for your insights. Before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Search me up on YouTube, Alfonso Peluso. Click on the subscribe button. Click on the down arrow to receive all the notifications. Help me get to 14,000 subscribers. That's going to be a great milestone. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso underscore my last name, Peluso. Help me reach 10,000 followers. I'm so close. If you're seeing this video today or tomorrow, you might be my 10,000th follower. That would be amazing. All right. So before we dive in, I would like to ask you, have you used any sort of AI? Please let me know in the comments, yes or no, and let me know what you've used AI for. So this task force was assembled in March of 2024. I think it's good to establish a date so we can look back and see how far we've come and in what capacity. As we begin our discussion on the integration of AI in architecture schools, we'll need to discuss what AI is and where did it come from. The concept of AI started back in 1950, almost 75 years ago. Presently, AI is silently part of our everyday life. The image on the right has a line through it because we sometimes connect AI to robots when it's not a physical machine, but rather a silent assistant. Currently, AI helps us write emails and text messages, suggests friends on social media, makes recommendations for movies and songs, assists us in driving our cars, adjusts the temperature of our homes. So what is AI? By definition, it's the concept of making machines think like humans but it's already far more than that. Currently, AI applications are out thinking humans and are doing the work of many humans. I like the line that they, the machines, are unaware of it. Back to the concept of AI being 75 years old. In 1950, Alan Turing, one of the founding fathers of AI, developed the Turing test where humans are responsible for deciding if something was created by a human or a machine. If the machine generated thing passes itself off as being generated by a human, then it passes the Turing test. Let's spend some time getting familiar with what AI is made of. We'll start with neural networks. We'll call them NNs. NNs are designed to function like the human brain with neurons sending information through synapses. In 1957, Frank Rosenblatt created the NN named Perception. There are two subcategories of AI. They are machine learning and deep learning. Machine learning uses NNs that are trained on data that is labeled and tagged. That's called supervised learning. The NNs have three or less hidden layers. We'll talk more about that soon. Deep learning uses NNs that are trained on data that is not labeled or tagged. This is called unsupervised learning. These neural networks have more than three hidden layers and they can generate results that aren't part of their training. On the left, we see an example of a machine learning neural network with one hidden layer. 
There are input nodes on the left. The middle is the black box of the network where the magic happens. Based on weighted algorithm information, it's processed there and sent to the output nodes on the right. The neural network on the right is an example of deep learning neural networks with three or more hidden layers. Large language models. In 1966, the first LLM, ELISA, was created. LLMs are designed around what the user wants. The user is in charge and initiates the conversation and asks the question. The most common LLM used today is ChatGPT by OpenAI. This shows an example of the chatbot Eliza. This is a reconstructed version from 2005. LLMs are currently the way we approach research, writing code, and chatbots are affecting the way we engage socially. So we briefly looked at where AI started and its subcategories. Let's now look at some key moments in recent history. In 1997, most people thought that the idea of a computer beating a human in anything was far-fetched. But that very thing shocked people when a computer beat chess champion Gary Kasparov in 1997. Then, in 2016, a huge shock was sent through the Go-playing nations when a computer system called AlphaGo beat the Korean Go champ. Then a year later, Google's AlphaGo Zero system beat its predecessor by training itself by playing almost 5 million games against itself. More recently, in 2014, GANs were invented. General adversarial networks are what is behind the term generative AI. GANs are made up of two neural networks. One is the generator and the other is the discriminator. The goal of the generator is to fool the discriminator. By doing this, the generator trains itself at generating results that pass as being generated by humans. The fusion models are behind the popular image generators like Dolly 3, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion. These models learn from a data set by recognizing patterns and images. Stable Diffusion models turn images into Gaussian noise and then reverse the process by responding to text prompts with Gaussian noise that is turned into images that match the text prompt. Here is an example of a data set that was used to train a diffusion model. This one is trained on fish, wolves, butterflies, and elephants. Here we see an example of the noising and denoising method. So on the very left, is how an, a diffusion model is trained, say with an image of a cat. It takes that image of a cat, turns it into Gaussian noise. Then when it's prompted with text, it takes that Gaussian noise, denoises it, and turns it into an image. The invention of LLMs, GANs, and diffusion models have brought us to what many think of as the AI revolution. In 2021, OpenAI releases DALI. The next year, it releases ChatGPT. And Midjourney, the text to image generator, is released in the same year. Where are we today? RIBA conducted and published a report showing that 41% of UK architects use AI. Stability AI released Stable Division 3 to a select group. This model seems to understand multimodal text prompts very well. The company Xcool released its suite of AI tools with design applications to construction management and everything in between. And Sora is set to disrupt the film, gaming, architecture, and other industries with its release of Sora, a text-to-video generator. AI is creating new job opportunities. This ad from an ex-Saha Hadid architect who started his own practice is seeking a prompt engineer. Basically, someone who is skilled at writing text to generate images and video. What is in the works? Text to 3D. I've recently experimented with a tool that generated 3D models, and the results are impressive. Text to BIM will be next. Also, structural and energy optimization is in the works. What's the pace of AI advancements? For this, I refer us to Moore's Law. 
which was initially stated that the number of transistors on a circuit board will double every year. Well, we have since passed that up and recently reached a plateau. Some say that AI's pace is shattering Moore's law. How is AI currently used in architecture? The first way is idea generation. Tools like Midjourney, Dolly 3 are being used to quickly generate ideas through image generation. Later in the design process, tools like Stable Diffusion are being used to generate renderings and animations of a project. Some tools are used to automate the drawing process, which I'm calling CAD 2.0. Neil Leach talks about how hand drawing was just called drawing, then drawing on the computer was called computer drawing, but now computer drawing is just called drawing, and drawing by hand is called hand drawing. AI is augmenting certain tasks, especially in the fabrication field, through the use of VR goggles to see a finished project realized on site at full scale. Viewers can see exactly where the building objects should be placed and how to place them. Hallucination is the term that describes when computers dream. This is when they generate something that is outside of their training. These hallucinations can spark novel ideas for architects. So now I present to you the question, where can AI be integrated into an architecture curriculum? Please help me answer this question by participating in the comments. Is it through modules that are taught during a design studio by experts? Is it through short mini assignments that leverage AI to meet the brief? Is it through a competition possibly sponsored by a donor as a way to connect students to the profession? Is it through a lecture series where experts come and present how they use AI? Is it through a symposium where AI work is on display and a discussion happens around the work? Next, what's AI's role in a school of architecture? Is it just another tool like CAD or BIM? Or is it more of a sidekick, an augmentation, or an extension of our mind and body? We already see it being used in research. Will it be used more? Can AI spark a new way to approach design? Will it free us from doing the repetitive tasks of architecture and allow us to focus more on the important ones? What's our target? What will the profession look like for our incoming class of freshmen when they graduate? By predicting this, maybe it can help us integrate AI into the architecture school curriculum. I'll leave you with this last slide. It has three AI-generated images. The first one is a response to the prompt, architecture office in the early 90s. The second image is a response to the prompt, architecture office in the 2010s. And the last image is a response to the prompt, architecture office in the 2030s. Let's continue this discussion in the comments. Please share your thoughts.